you'll know about that famous Harvard cognitive test called the invisible gorilla. I hope you've all taken it already because, spoiler alert, I'm about to ruin it for you. The invisible gorilla test involves a short video clip of two basketball teams, one in white uniforms and one in black uniforms, and the test takers are directed to count every time the team in white passes the ball. It's an intense, fast-paced game. The test takers are devoted to their task. And in the middle of this game, a student dressed in a full-body gorilla outfit walks onto the court, faces the camera, and beats her chest a few times for dramatic effect and walks off. It takes about six seconds in a nine-minute clip. At the end of the test, the test takers are asked, did you notice anything unusual during the game? No? Uh, so you didn't notice the gorilla. A remarkable percentage of people drop their jaws and ask, are you crazy? There was no gorilla. If, listen, if there had been a gorilla in the middle of a basketball court, in the middle of a game, I'd have noticed. How could anyone have missed it? How indeed. But of course, they had missed it. When they were shown the film clip again, they simply could not believe they hadn't seen that gorilla. They saw it plain as day after they knew to look for it. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, there were some people who were so certain that they were right, that there was no gorilla, that they accused the scientists of switching the original gorilla-free film clip for one that actually had a gorilla. I'm betting a lot of those folks work on Wall Street managing hedge funds. You know, of course, that the same cognitive failings are at work when police gather confident eyewitness testimony that turns out to be so often dead wrong. Indeed, a notable percentage of the death row convictions that have been reversed because of new DNA evidence originally rested on the confident testimony of eyewitnesses who were absolutely certain that they had seen what happened and who unwittingly incriminated an innocent man. So the Madoff case is a searing reminder that all of us have the capacity to miss what is right under our noses. If we're not expecting it, if we're focused intently on something else, or if we have allowed our vision to be clouded by our trust in some dazzling genius, or by our faith in our own judgment about who is trustworthy and who isn't. Unfortunately, that suggests that the only sure vaccine against Ponzi schemes would be clinical paranoia. And that would surely make your jobs easier, wouldn't it? Because it's true that Ponzi schemes are absolutely impossible in a world where nobody trusts anybody. But nobody wants to live in a world like that. And modern commerce is impossible in a world like that. Who wants to work in an organization or live in a world where everyone is under suspicion all of the time isn't part of the charm of this great organization. The fact that you feel you can trust one another. So clearly, we cannot fault investors and regulators just for having trusted Bernie Madoff. He could do a perfect impersonation of an honest man, and besides, we're more or less hardwired to trust one another. So we can't simply decree that people should stop trusting each other unless we want to bring human commerce and all human society to a halt. But what we can learn, what we must learn, is some old-fashioned humility. We must realize that our natural inclination to trust others, especially others who look a lot like us, sound a lot like us, seem to believe in the same things we believe in, that natural inclination to trust and our ill-placed faith in our own gut instincts can combine to create blind spots big enough to hide a fraud the size of Bernie Madoff. And by definition, we never see our own blind spots until it's too late.
So that's the challenge that you face as anti-fraud professionals. When it comes to preventing and detecting Ponzi schemes, we don't need systems that will protect us from all the suspicious characters out there. We need systems that will protect us from the people we trust the most. Because they are the ones, they are the only ones who can lure us into a Ponzi scheme. And that's a very tall order. A compliant system that can withstand our own intense desires to build trusting relationships with those around us. 